All right, in this video, we'll continue on with Unit 4 with 4.2, Introduction of the Signal Transduction Pathway. And so the Signal Transduction Pathway, there are three stages to that, and the way that I like to think about it is like a phone call. So if, I, if, if my phone is ringing, that ringing is a signal. And when I receive that signal, I know exactly what that means. It means that my phone, there's someone that wants to talk to me. All right, so that would be the reception of that. And then there's a series of steps that go on in order for me to receive that message. I pick my phone up. I push the button that says answer the call. I pick the phone up to my ear. That is a series of processes. And even receiving that message, like someone is speaking to me, I'm hearing it. My brain is processing it. All right. And so then that is the what we're going to call transduction. And then the next part of that is then the response. I have, I have heard the signal. I've answered and I've heard the message. Now I have to decide how I'm going to respond to that. And that is the response. And so those three parts of that pathway, here they are again, reception, receiving the message, transduction. That is a transduction is basically converting that signal into a thing that can bring about a cellular response. And then the response is going to be um, usually making a protein that response is going to, or that transduction is going to make its way into the nucleus uh, to turn on some section of the DNA in order to make some sort of protein to do some sort of cellular thing. Uh, that is the way that cells operate is by making proteins. And so that is going to usually be the end of this pathway is to make a protein. Um, a little bit more about transduction just to add here. Uh, we, you know, there's usually, there's this process called phosphorylation, which is going to be, uh, you know, like ATP had that third phosphate. And when it put a phosphate on something, it turned it on. And so typically transduction is going to be a series of phosphorylation cascades is what we want to call it. It's kind of like if you have like a champagne fountain and you pour champagne into the top glass, eventually the top glass gets full and pours over into the other ones and starts to cascade down. And so a, a transduction cascade is one signal is going to turn on two, those two are going to turn on four, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and elicit a big, big response typically by the cell. There's a way to, uh, that's what that's called is amplification, it's amplifying that signal. Think of transduction as like a relay. Um, someone knocks, my classroom is really long. I have on one end, I have my desk on the far other end is uh, the door and someone knocks on the door. Uh, it's easy for me to just tell, ask a student to go and answer the door for me. That is a relay rather than me doing that. So that would be an example of that. So a little bit about reception, uh, signaling begins with the recognition of a chemical messenger and that chemical messenger is generically called a ligand. And so a ligand is just any type of chemical messenger, um, but obviously there are specific names for ligands, but ligand is just a generic term. And usually some sort of small molecule, a peptide, like one or two amino acids, uh, some sort of bigger protein, uh, there's a lot of things it could be, honestly. Um, there's a G, G protein receptors. I don't have that here, but I do have this. Uh, and that maybe I do have the G protein in a second, actually. And so this shows you the ligand binding domain. And what it's just showing you is that this ligand and this binding site are specifically made for one another. This, uh, this cell has this little receptor and it can only talk to this ligand. And this makes this target cell very specific and this signal very specific. So this signal is only going to activate certain kinds of cells, which is very important. And there's my G protein. And so again, here you go. You have a messenger and this receptor is going to receive that and that's going to cause it to activate this G protein. And that G protein is going to go do something else, which would be part of that whole transduction sort of thing. Um, some s signals are received on the cell membrane, like you see here, just like we talked about. These are typically non-steroidal type hormones. They're non-steroid, meaning they are not wires, uh, they're not fat soluble. Um, and so they, they don't like fat. They want to, uh, that, so they are polar and uh, they can't get through the cell membrane. And so they have to be received at the door, so to speak. But then there are some that are fat soluble or are nonpolar that can pass directly through the cell membrane. This is typically steroids and they're received on the inside 
of the cell rather than the outside of the cell. And so a little bit more about transduction. So a signal cascade is just, again, a relay type system. You have the reception of the ligand. You have a receptor here. It's going to trigger a number of things. Those number are going to trigger a greater number and so forth. And you have one ligand that is going to be amplified into many intracellular type responses. And so that is a, a way to amplify a single signal into a massive response. So usually uh, genes are going to be, or proteins are going to be uh, made. This could be like cellular growth. This could be the secretion of molecules like long distance signals for another type of thing. Um, and so that's what we mean by this kind of cascade. Um, this, this shows you this idea of protein modification, which is very important in this. We'll call this a conformation shape change. We've talked about this a little bit already, this idea that um, when a protein is changed or when a protein is modified, it will kind of change shape, changes its function. You have a protein here that's kind of, quote unquote, turned off, and then ATP will come and phosphorylate that, and then that protein is now activated, and it will go do a thing. It will go and... Um, do whatever it's going to do. Uh, secondary messengers are also used in this process, and a secondary messenger is just a relay signal. They're used to relay to amplify that. Uh, cyclic AMP is, an, is a popular, popular as if it was voted or something. It is a common um, signal me or secondary messenger that is used by cells. And um, another thing is for some ligands, they cause gates to be opened. Um, so you have these uh, gated channels is what they're called. So you can see here the gate is literally closed, but the signal molecule binds. It causes a conformation shape change that causes that gate to open and the little green dots can go into the cell, whatever those little green dots are. Uh, this is an example of this would be like a neurotransmitter or something along those lines. Or so a neurotransmitter binds, causes a sodium channel to open. Sodium goes in, elicits a cellular response, which is typically uh, furthering a neurotransmitter or neural response, like an electrical response. But that's just one example upon many that we could talk about here. So the big idea here is just going back up to the top receive and then transduction you have this signal kind of pathway and at the end there's some sort of cellular response continuing the message making a protein secreting some kind of molecule there could be any number of cellular responses that are going to be initiated but this these three steps are how that is started